but the Irish in Canada, who, looking back to their small beginnings a few years ago, have already made so much headway, who have already acquired so much property, who already exercise, by common consent, so large a share of legitimate influence. They have a position to guard, and guard it they will, with national ardour and resolution. Mr Chairman, in holding this language, I'm morally certain I speak for 999 out of a thousand of all my countrymen in Canada, for all the old and known residents, for all but a handful of those who are known as skedaddlers, runaways from the first and second American draft, who would not fight for the United States when they were in it, and who would be satisfied nowhere under any form of government that required duties to be discharged in return for rights conceded. If there are any Fenian sympathizers among us, they are altogether of that class, and the Americans ought to know by this time what reliance to place on them and their reports. But with all due respect for our American neighbors, I think it must be admitted that the levity with which their leading men have spoken of letting loose this lawless element upon our provinces is little to their honor. No doubt something is allowable to the exuberance of spirits consequent on escape from civil war, something too for the feeling that English neutrality was not fairly or fully observed on the high seas. Putting aside, but not for a moment admitting that allegation, what possible complaint can they have against Canada? Has not their government officially acknowledged the bona fide efforts of our government to enforce the laws of good neighbourhood and to prevent raids across the frontier? We know that, and they know it. And the truth is that although so many of their leading men and organs hold the language to which they object, if the Fenians were to violate the Neutrality Act tomorrow by any public move, the United States authorities would, for their own sakes, pounce upon them at once. It is unfair, then, I say, to us. It is unworthy of themselves, and it is cruel to those foolish Fenians as well, to hold a language they would be obliged to abandon, to coquette with questions of peace and war, which they will find time enough to take up seriously when they have reconstructed their union and readjusted their finances. Oh 
Look here, McGee. This government cannot afford two drunkards. You have to stop.